Here we are again then looking at the various generations of the zero feedback mono blocks. And we've got the APA 7.5, Mono X and then the Mono X 300. The last time we looked at these we looked at the noise floors and we saw that the 300 had a higher noise floor and we came up with a mod to improve on that. So what I want to do this time is we'll look at what the difference is in the signal paths between these uh, different generations and then what we'll do is we'll see if we can come up with a, a mod or an upgrade that takes the APA 7.5 and the Mono X and upgrades that to the same signal path as the 300 and then we can retrofit that uh, mod to these units. So let's take a look at the differences between these uh, units uh, and then we'll figure out what we're going to do. Let's take a look at the architecture of these amplifiers then. And what we see is that uh, everything from the APA7 all the way through to the Mono X300 signature, they all share the same architecture here. And it's a three-stage uh, process, as we see here. Um, very different from your traditional feedback amplifier. Uh, what we see is we start with the voltage amplifier stage, and then we buffer that, and then that drives our current amplification stage, the output stage here. Um, and these uh, three blocks that we see, these are absolutely identical for all models of these amplifiers. Um, there's maybe some component value changes uh, in the voltage amplifier stage here. Um, but other than that, these three blocks are, are uh, absolutely identical. Um, and so the differences, as we go through the, the various models, the differences are associated with the the coupling to the input of this voltage amplifier and then how that couples to the buffer and the only difference beyond that is in the supply lines here. Um, so let's take a look at uh, these uh, differences in a little bit more detail. So this table here just shows a comparison of what's uh, going on and what we see is uh, the APA 7 or 7.5 on the input coupling, uh, we see some electrolytic capacitors and uh, the same for the coupling to the buffer. It's just a DC block between these sections here. Um, so it's pretty traditional stuff. When we move to the Mono X, um, essentially we've put some bigger capacitors in here. Uh, and again, in the, in the buffer section, bigger electrolytic capacitors. Um, and uh, what we find is there's a little adapter board that mounts these capacitors and we'll take a look at that in a minute. When we move to the Mono X200 or 300, these capacitors have been removed or the electrolytic capacitors have been removed anyway. And what we find is that the input section uh, uses a, a much higher quality metal film capacitor and then we use a, a buffer, an op-amp buffer uh, to couple into the main amplifier. So looking at the, the coupling to the buffer section then, what we see is that we've removed the electrolytic capacitors and we've, we've now got DC coupling. So we've got a direct connection between these two sections. And what we do is we use an op-amp servo to drive that point to zero volts. Um, so this is another classic technique and it's, uh, it's definitely a positive thing to see that in here, you know, removing those electrolytic capacitors and move into a direct connection is uh, that's only a positive thing. Um, other differences then we, we look at the output section and we see that we've got slightly higher voltages in some areas and we've got some more heat sinking going on there and, and this is to in some way to attempt to justify the higher output power specs of these amplifiers. Um, now, I, I can't say I'm convinced by the, the uh, data sheet numbers on the, on the power. Um, when you look at it, it's just a number. It doesn't tell you whether it's RMS power, doesn't tell you if it's continuous power, doesn't tell you over what frequency range it covers, um, yeah, none of these items. So I think, you know, when I look at it, the, these powers are more of a marketing uh, thing. Uh, in reality, you know, you look at these amplifiers and the output section is, is identical. Um, and so I, I, uh, I think the, the power ratings are a kind of questionable area. There is no doubt, though, that uh, the input section moving to a, a high quality film capacitor 
and the DC coupling. This is this is a good direction. So, question then: um, Can we come up with some modification for the APA 7.5 or the Mono X to upgrade to this type of signal path? Uh, you know, can we can we remove these electrolytic capacitors and move to this type of arrangement? Um, so let's take a look at the actual boards and see if there's any sensible means uh, to allow us to do that. So here we've got the boards from the APA 7.5 and then this is the Mono X here. And these boards are virtually identical. The, the, the only real difference is this uh, little daughter board here on the Mono X. And if we remove that, what we can see is that on the APA 7.5 We've got these two capacitors here, two small capacitors, and then this little board here that's in the Mono X. These uh, headers here just plug into the same sockets as these capacitors, and we've got some bigger capacitors on the board here. And then same is true, uh, these are related to the, this one's to do with the coupling between the, the voltage amplifier and the buffer. And that's replaced with these two capacitors in series. So basically just got a bigger capacitor. And then this one's related to the voltage amplifier uh, stage. And uh, these guys here are all in parallel. And that replaces uh, this uh, capacitor here. But if we actually remove these, um, and then, you know, this board could plug in there just the same as it does in the Mono X. Uh, so that's the main difference. And the question is, can we come up with a board, you know, a little daughter board like this, eh, or, or, or a similar idea, that contains the op-amp circuitry that's in the Mono X300? Eh, and then we could just retrofit that into either the APA 7.5 or the Mono X. So let's take a look at what's, what we can do there. This is what we've come up with then. This is our little uh, daughter board um, to upgrade the signal path uh, of the APA 7.5 or the Mono X and we've got our op amp here and then there's a bunch of components for the feedback and we won't use all of them but that uh, just gives me some flexibility in what we might do. The film capacitor here is shown in red and then the other channel of the op amp that acts as our DC servo that's R10 and C4 here uh, and then the output of that servo is combined with the audio before the signal goes back out in J2. And if we sort of have a look underneath the board, we can see the, the four headers here that uh, they'll just plug in the same as the Mono X board did. Uh, so there we are, That's that's this is the plan. And uh, you know, it'll take a few weeks to get these boards made and then we'll do some testing before we install them and see how they behave in the unit. So while we're waiting on our little daughter boards turning up then, we've still got some work to do on the main board here. You know, we have to remove these capacitors um, and uh, you know, put in some links and uh, uh, things like that. Uh, I've already got some of the bigger capacitors removed here because these will all get replaced anyway. Um, so we've got that to do so I can get on with that. And then there's a few things I see on the underside of the board here. Um, if we look at the the connections to the loudspeaker and what we see is that uh, this trace here is coming through and it comes off the common point of the emitter resistor on from these pair of transistors and then heads off to the positive output in the loudspeaker and then we see that this trace uh, we've got three vias here and then it goes to the other side of the board and comes along and another three vias and that goes to the emitter resistor here the common point here and this, uh, you, you know, three vias in series with three vias is a very, you know, that's kind of, this is our loudspeaker path, you know, this is a high current path. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, basically put a, 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 a length of cable between these two emitter resistor common points so that we've got a very, uh, you know, high current uh, path there. And then the other one I see is that... Um, from the uh, negative output in the loudspeakers there's a trace comes over and then this here's a capacitor on the other side of the board and it uses this lead of the capacitor to take the negative uh, rail back to the common point so again that's another very uh, uh, 
you, you know, it's, it's not designed to take a lot of current, that. And uh, when it's in your speaker path, that's not ideal. So again, I'm just going to bridge a heavy piece of wire between there and the loudspeakers. And, uh, you know, that's just going to push things in the right direction. And uh, uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. And uh, get the rest of these, you know, get the rest of the... the uh, capacitors and things replaced on that board um, before our little adapter boards turn up. So here's just a quick sanity check before I go too far. Um, this is the EPA 7.5 board and I've removed these uh, four capacitors that we spoke about and um, if I take the adapter board for the existing Mono X um, that just fits in there perfectly. Um, so. That uh, again gives us confidence that, that that's really the difference is that we've moved to these bigger value capacitors and there's been no room in the board to do that so we've just uh, just had this little extension board and I'm not I'm not actually sure the technical benefit of this because all this does is moves the the corner frequency down um, at the various stages of the amplifier and you know. The corner frequency was low enough with these existing capacitors, so what, what the actual benefit of this is, I have some question on. Um, but anyway, I mean, the, the concept here is that we can, both boards are identical, uh, such that we can come up with something that's going to fit in there, and uh, we'll just change the functionality up, up to the Mono X 300 uh, style. Okay, so the capacitors that were removed, uh, some of these have been replaced with wire links. Uh, there's some other areas where we've uh, swapped parts and other sections where we've changed some values. So there are, there are some, you know, there's a bunch of changes on the board other than the actual little extension board that we're going to do. And then of course all of these capacitors have been replaced with uh, higher temperature parts. And the other thing that's happened here is this board's been cleaned, so it's uh, looking looking very fresh now. So we just have to, it's going to be a small delay now where we wait for our little uh, adapter board before we can uh, put that in place there. So this is a few weeks later then and my little um, adapter board here has turned up and it looks very good, very happy with the quality of that. Um, and uh, you know the first thing I did was I, I checked that the, you know this is the adapter board for the Mono X and uh, I, I just checked that the you know my pins were lined up so I'm quite happy that they they made up there quite well um, so that's good and I've got a bunch of parts here so we'll uh, start to assemble this and we'll do some basic testing on this before we install it into the amplifier and uh, uh, you know see how it behaves in there so. so I've got the board partially assembled here then I just want to check the DC servo at this stage um, and uh, if I put a, a positive voltage on the input of this thing, the output should drive negative until the op amp hits its rail. Similar, if I put a negative input, then the op amp should drive positive until it hits its rail. So let's just check on that. I want 5 volts of division on the scope there. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, the op amp's uh, job here is to drive the output voltage such that the input voltage becomes zero. So at the moment this wire is not connected anywhere so the, the uh, trace on the scope is sitting at a pretty steady DC level. The op amp thinks it's quite happy there. Anyway, let's put a, a positive input and then we see it drives down to the negative rail and it's just going to stay there uh, and, until something else happens. So let's then, we'll put it on the negative input we should drive positive until we hit the rail. So that's that's working just fine, and we can stop anywhere in between, uh, and it just holds its uh, holds its state. So that's uh, quite happy with that. Um, so for the, I'll add the rest of the circuitry now, and then I'm I'm going to test the audio side inside the unit because that gives us the input signal path and uh, all the correct power supplies, etc. So we'll check the audio side once it's uh, wired up in the unit. So let's now go and. Uh, uh, do the rest of the assembly here. So here I've got a couple of assembled boards then. I'm going to upgrade a pair of APA 7.5s here. Um, so this is this is just a complete board. Um, and uh, we've got our headers on the other side there so that they can just uh, solder onto the, the main board of the amplifier. 
So that's these complete. I'm going to install these now and we'll, we'll do some testing on the audio side. Alright, so we've got our, our board uh, fully loaded up now and I've got some uh, wire leads coming off here for the power and then the signal in and the uh, signal back out to the board and it fits in fits in as we expect you know obviously we checked that with the, the uh, mono X board previously so that just fits in there just fine so I'll go ahead now and wire this in uh, and then we'll start to make some measurements okay so I've got the board uh, soldered to the main board here and then I've installed the uh, main board into the chassis just just loosely it's not screwed in or anything um, and I'm deliberately not connecting the power stage at this time you can see I've got the fuses missing and I've not connected the transformer so we're only going to be powering up the low voltage section or the low current section rather and also our control line uh, and what we should see then is uh, essentially zero volts um, when we look at the output of the buffer section of uh, the amplifier here so let's just uh, probe that point and then we'll turn the power on so that's the mains power on to the unit there uh, and nothing much happens then until we turn on the front panel so that turns the current sources on when we turn the power on at the front panel there and we saw a a higher voltage and then it drops down to near D, near zero here. We've got 20 millivolts uh, there, um, which is pretty good. Uh, the question is, why is that not zero? And the reason is that uh, you know we're sensing via a series resistor. It's a one meg resistor, and then that goes into the op amp, which is not perfect. So that op amp's drawn a little bit of current, and what we find is that uh, we measure. Uh, the sort of 20 millivolts on the board but on the op amp side we see absolutely zero so the op amp's doing its job and if we were worried about that 20 millivolts we could adjust the values to kind of take care of that but for now I'm quite happy with that and uh, next stage then we'll, we'll uh, put some audio through this thing and maybe make some measurements see how we go there alright so I made some audio measurements on the, the board uh, and I've tweaked a few values just to get everything where exactly where I want it to be um, and seems to be performing fine so that gave me enough confidence then you know I've got the, the power stages all connected up and powered up now um, and there uh, you can see this is the DC on the output of the amplifier there so we're just bobbing around uh, a, a few millivolts either side of zero volts there so that's exactly um, where it should be everything's, everything's good there uh, so the next thing now then I think we'll connect to the audio analyzer and we'll actually you know we'll make some make some measurements on the whole amplifier I've only measured to the uh, uh, add-on board here so far so we'll measure at the output as if it was a loudspeaker uh, and then we'll go and do some listening tests right then so we're connected to the audio analyzer here and I'm just checking the, the noise floors not uh, doing anything untoward um, so I've got a termination on the input and then the output is connected to 8 ohms and that's we're measuring across that and we can see we've got a very very nice flat noise floor exactly where it was before you know there's no real change in this graph which is what we what we hope for a little bit of 50 hertz pickup but that's uh, more to do with my measurement than anything uh, to do with the amplifier so I'm quite happy with this um, what I'll do now is I'll just uh, expand the a, a frequency here, we'll go up to 500k, just make sure there's nothing untoward going on in the spectrum, uh, and then we'll maybe look at some distortion measurements. Here we are then uh, looking uh, way out to 500kHz, and we can see the noise floor is still very, very quiet indeed all the way out there. So, uh, very happy with that. Um, and so the next thing we'll go and look at, uh, put a signal in, we'll look at the distortion. Alright, so here we are with a signal applied now and uh, it's looking good. Uh, so we've got 10 watts on the output here, just under 20 dBV and uh, the, the harmonic signature is pretty much what I expect and we can see the distortions down near 0.003% uh, which is well within spec. So everything seems to be working very well and uh, what we need to do now is go and have a listen to these amplifiers and see uh, see what kind of difference these changes have made.
So just to comment on the op amp that I'm using in this design, I'm using the OPA 1612 from uh, Texas Instruments. And I'm using this because I've used it before and I, I know how it behaves. Uh, and uh, you know, I'm, uh, the other reason of course is that it's a very, very low distortion op amp and very low noise also. So it's just going to be transparent in our design. You know, compared to the actual amplifier circuitry, this is going to contribute to nothing uh, in, in, these, in these parameters. And of course we can change op amps, we can, we can look at different types and we might get a different sound signature from uh, different op amps. Um, but this is the one I'm using for now and uh, you know I'll run this for a while, do some listening tests and then uh, see how we go. So here we've got our pair of APA 7.5 amplifiers then, uh, both with the upgraded signal path using our little daughter board. And I'm pairing them with an ACA 7.5 preamplifier here. Um, this has been for repair, so this gives me a good chance to run it for a while, and it's a, it's a good combination anyway. So we we know we've you know we've removed all the electrolytic capacitors from the signal path here. We know in general that's a good thing to do, um, but the question is how how do they sound? You know, is there any any benefit uh, in doing this? And what I would say is that the the first time I heard the Mono X three hundred. It, it just appeared to be a much more open and airy sound compared to the previous generation. And I do get that same experience here, so I'm, I'm happy that we've moved things in the right direction. Um, and of course we, we saw in a, a previous video that the Mono X300 is actually quite a noisy amplifier compared to these earlier ones. So here we've got the benefit of the quieter amplifier plus the upgraded signal path. So I've got a lot more uh, listening to do, but let's just turn up the volume here. I wish I had the wings to fly. 